uh, with your loved ones uh, yesterday and over the weekend. Hello to America's Beautiful Children, we love you. And so today I have with me a very special guest who's near and dear to my heart, uh, my daughter Anaya Laster. Go ahead and tell people who you are. Hi, my name is Anaya Laster. I'm the daughter of Christina Laster. <laughs> and well, I'm 14 and I do art. And so, you know, I wanted to take this opportunity um, for those of you that are, you know, friends on my page or watch my page at Y Society. Um, I often post my daughter's art. And I wanted to just talk about that a little bit more um, and why I love creativity and allowing her to experiment. Um, but I do have to say that during the time that I had her in um, traditional um, public school, my daughter had the desire um, to draw during the day, you know, just freely draw. Um, and that was something that I had to battle for her to be able to do. Um, it was a part of her mood regulation coping strategy, just making through her six hour and a half hour day at school that she would be able to doodle, draw her, um, you know, creativity juices flowing. But unfortunately, that was not something that she was allowed to do. And so ultimately, I am glad um, that I said, you know, enough of this. I'm going to protect my children's creativity. I'm going to protect their innovativeness. I'm going to protect their brains. I'm going to protect their emotions that I homeschool. And so, um, you know, I really do like what art um, offers because you can put into your creative expression all kinds of historical context. Um, that's what murals does. And so today I'm gonna allow her to talk about what her creative expressions are and why she draws the things that she draws. So go ahead and talk about what you love drawing most. I love drawing animals most because like animals symbolize, well to me animals symbolize peace because they're innocent. <laughs> and there's nothing they could do wrong. Well, nothing they could do wrong, and they're peaceful, and it's just calming for me. And I, I draw animals just because, like, I want to be extreme field zoologist, so that's what I do. So um, the first time that I noticed that she had um, this gift um, and this talent was when she was able to hold a pencil. Um, and I would see like, wow, she's drawing these amazing things. Um, and they had, you know, just every single aspect of it was very detailed. Um, and so I continued to allow her to walk around with a pencil and a pad and be able to just create. And she really didn't like um, utilizing like coloring books, you know. Um, because she creates, she creates her own things. And so um, her desire, I think, for being a field zoologist is based on what she sees in nature um, and what she's experienced with animals, which I allow her to draw. So show what your, um, your start looks like, your sketchbook. So she's going to share her sketchbook and talk about what her... Um, experiences so what i do first is i always start off with drawing okay hold eyes. it up i always start off with drawing the eyes to the animals so i can um, practice the eyes and get the eyes down because most of my confidence is in drawing the body and the eyes are like you have to get the eyes to like a perfective or accurate position so it could look right <laughs> and then i go off to starting the head but I don't know if you can see that. So she started with the eyes, um, and since she's fully confident in her ability to draw the body. So, and then after I do the head, then I put two and two together and add details. And then when I'm confident in that, <laughs> then I move on to bigger stages where then I bring in the, the, um, the canvas and the paints. Wow. And so I watched her draw 
um, and sketched this um, yesterday. And what I saw was like, she was looking through a whole bunch of like um, pictures online um, of animals um, that she was inspired by this movie that we watched. What was the movie that we watched? And there were like animals. Oh, Lion King, the live action. Oh, we were <laughs> watching the Lion King. Um, the version that I do not like, that, the that weird action. one, right? That it's, <laughs> it's like um, live or something. I'm used to the cartoon version of the Lion King. And they wanted to watch the live action, whatever, I don't know, weird Lion King that I did not <laughs> like. <laughs> and so anyway, um, she got inspired to start to draw. Um, and so what she did was again, she says she started with, let's go back. And I want to show you how that, that progressed. She started with the eyes because she says she's fully confident in her ability to do the bodies. Right. And, and so she then created the sketch on paper of the body to make sure that it was Right, I guess. I watch her do this. So this is something that, you know. And then she moved to this step, which is detailed, you know, making sure that those those uh, cheetah uh, prints are right. Wait, 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 that's the one in progress. You guys could tell I am not the artist here, but I appreciate it. And then it came to this. And that to me is amazing watching her um, get to this step um, after she gets to other, other, after she does the other steps and she has her process. And so I just give her the uh, paints and the acrylics and the canvases. Um, as a matter of fact, these canvases came in last week and she was like, oh, oh my God, I love these canvases. And away she went. So talk about your other picture that you. Um, you have here um well this is the cat i just oh i painted on this canvas it's a cat with the yarn basket in the back what it what inspired you to do this well i was just sitting on the couch and i was like i'm just gonna draw a cat <laughs> it turned out from the cat to the yarn basket and then to the painting and sometimes like it just when i start drawing I just go with the flow, I guess. <laughs> and that's nice. You know, I know that you, um, you, when you first got the canvases, that was like one of your first projects. Um, and then you were like, oh, okay, I'm gonna do something else. Okay, go ahead. And then I um, painted this bear with the writings, uh, Lasta Tribe on it. <laughs> and what inspired you to do that? Uh, my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he kind of told you yeah, that told you were going to draw the, uh, a bear for him. Um, and, you know, it was interesting that I had, we were watching, what was that that we were watching and the guy was a tattoo artist and I think he started was, out. I don't remember the name, but it was like the cool. Oh, cartoon. Oh, okay. Cartoon. Yeah. So we were watching um, something about um, murals um, and how this guy who was this, famous tattoo artist started out by just drawing his parents saw that he had a gift um him and his photography friend and basically they um, encouraged him to use that gift told him that he was gifted um in that area and there was no low expectation and so what happened was he um started creating like murals and things like that and everybody could recognize his art um he became very like he perfected his gift right and then he somehow shifted into um wanting to you know be involved in tattooing but what happened was he recognized that skin is a lot different right um and so he had to like um take his gift and understand that he was mastering in one area of murals and shirts and all kinds of other stuff that he could do very well. But then he had to kind of like rethink um, and reimagine how he was going to be able to draw on skin. And so I inspired my daughter to take her gift and start trying to um, basically use other materials, um, 
different types of like textures. Um, and I think that she's doing very well with that. So talk about what you have coming down the pipeline here. <laughs> this will probably get done today. So I'm sure. So this is a work in progress. It's a hyena sketch of the hyena I will be painting on one of my 11 by 14 canvases. And that's gonna be a little bit more difficult because I have to figure out a way to fit the whole body onto the canvas. And like, I have to do more detail because hyenas are some more detail than other animals. Like with the spots and the fur going different ways because it's, it's a type of dog, it's a type of canid. So how do you get the colors right? Well, before I was just mixing, well, before yesterday, <laughs> I was just <laughs> mixing colors and looking at them. And then my mom brought up the good idea to go look at it, acrylic paint color wheel. So <laughs> I went online and looked at the color wheel. And my mom is like my, my assistant <laughs> because, <laughs> because um, when I find the colors, I'm always asking her, does this look like, like, if you look at this, does this look like the actual color of the real animal? Because mm -hmm. I want her, I like, I, to me, if it looks like it, then yeah. But if I give it to somebody else and it doesn't look like the animal, I want to know what the, like, what colors do I need to mix? I mean, the cheetah. And so, you know, if you guys don't know about color wheels and your children are, um, very creative and artistic you should introduce them to the color uh, wills because then they can understand what types of colors go well together um but then and there's times in different forms of art that you you will see a piece um and then out of nowhere you'll see like this red item in the middle right or some like really just thing that stands out like a rose or something right um and the artists that do that they do that on purpose but when you look at the color wheel um you can move their imagination from just basic understanding of colors to actually understanding how they blend and how they mix and how they mix well and how they coordinate together. And so I did um, basically admonish her, I deputized her, <laughs> volunteered to go look at the color wheel so that she can get a broader understanding of what goes well together and that's how you know basically we came out with this piece and i think she's probably going to paint the border of this canvas and so really what she does is tell them how you do this with the and get it in the middle like that um so what i do for well for this one because i trout and air it with the other canvases so what i notice is if i wanted to get the accurate position I set my sketchbook into the middle of the canvas, and then I get my, I don't have painter's tape, I have duct tape. Duct tape! <laughs> so, um, I measure it, usually I measure like half, an inch and a half, and I measure the border all around, make sure that it's close to precise or accurate, and that's how I do the board. I leave the tape on the whole time I'm painting, and after I'm done painting, because the crib dries really fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As a matter of fact, <laughs> I was calling her name um, and saying, hey, I need you to, you know, I forgot what I was asking her to do. And she's like, mom, I can't. The acrylic dries really fast. My paint's going to dry. And I, I was like, okay, you know, um, let me let girlfriend go on ahead and finish her thing. And I said, well, when that dries, then can you do it? Okay. So yes, she's always aware that the acrylic dries very fast. And now I am fully aware. Yes. To <laughs> not ask her to do things while she's painting and the acrylic still, you know, yeah. Because yeah. I have to, I, I was said, I had to do the cheetah. And like what I do with the cheetah was I um, painted the top coat first, which is I think raw sienna mixed with like a orange, uh, I forgot the names. It's like an orangish kind of brown, raw sienna and white mixed together. Mm -hmm. And then what I had to do was do the top coat, the full cheetah. I put that, except for the borders where the white and the black go, except for the, I left the dots. <laughs> and I put black over it with white to make everything pop out. 
so what did you paint on that canvas first so that people that may be curious about um painting on a canvas like was the was the cheetah first um and did you sketch it on there you know so i um i did i'll, I'll hold it <laughs> i i sketched the cheetah first uh before everything because i was just like i sketched the cheetah first and i did all the background last after I sketched the cheetah, I did the dots and the details so I know where to put the dots and the eyes and every, and the colors. And then I went with the top coat with the browns and the raw siennas. And then for the eyes, I did a little bit darker shade of those colors. And then I went to the black. <laughs> the black was a little bit harder because I dropped my paintbrush on the canvas. Yes. <laughs> But we get, you know, we'll talk about how you're able to correct mistakes and people don't even notice that you dropped the <laughs> paintbrush on the canvas. So then I added the spots and the lines and then um, I left it and then I noticed, wait, I looked at the picture and I was like, wait, I did something wrong. <laughs> well, this part and the chest part was a little darker than it was supposed to be. So what I did was just add a coat of white on top of it. Mm -hmm. And then I went to the tree, which my mom's idea was the tree. And then I did the rocks and the sunlight and the grass. And so when you make a mistake, how are you able to um, fix it? And I'll set that right there. Well, the mistake that I made was actually, I want to say a good mistake. Okay. Because when I dropped the paintbrush on the cheetah, I was using the black. Mm -hmm. And it just made it, I was upset at first, and I looked at it, and I was like, wait, all cheetahs are different. Yeah. It makes it look like it's a natural cheetah on natural spots. Mm -hmm. So I just left it on there, and I, I went on. But then I made a mistake with the grass. <laughs> but so what I did with the grass was I was using, I think it's a mermaid mm -hmm. brush. I forgot. <laughs> I don't know the names of the brushes. I just use them. And I was using that grass, I was using the brush to make the grass. And I messed up because I put the grass a little bit too far on the cheetah. But I left it there because <laughs> I was like, nobody like it will it looks like natural grass. Right. So what I what would I do to make fix like big mistakes? Mm -hmm. I go with it. I like mix more colors to make it look like something like abstract. And so making those mistakes and being able to um, to maneuver around them and fix them, and no one can actually tell that, you know, you made those mistakes. Um, how does that help you as an artist the next time? It helps me learn not to drop the brush on my canvas. <laughs> and, um, when I'm doing art and people are doing art with me and they say, oh, I messed up. I said, don't think of it as making a mistake. Think of it as, oh, you're doing abstract art. Right. There's no mistakes in art. Right. Exactly. And so, you know, um, I wanted to share this information with you all today um, and, and my daughter's heart for art because, you know, whatever it may be that your child um, likes to do, allow them to master that, allow them to experiment with their talent, their gifts and abilities. Um, and they will, you know, you'll see then flourish and prosper from that. And so I hope that again, that you're all well. Is there anything that you would like to share um, with regards to what you have upcoming projects? I see that the Lion King really inspired you. Um, we got a, a hyena coming next. We'll keep you posted. But is there anything you would like to share to maybe other students that are watching? Um, well, if you don't do art, then you should just try a form of art, like singing or dancing. And if you do do art, just remember, don't get mad. It's a technique made for calming. Mm -hmm. And and if, if you have writers or drawing block, then you should probably like sit down and watch a movie, look for references on the internet, or just go outside and look at the animals or everything around you. Good advice. And so you heard it from the artist, Anaya Laster herself, my daughter. I am so proud um, and I'm very happy that she's able to make these wonderful things that I can enjoy around my home. Um, everyone needs something beautiful to look at. And so thank you for watching. 
We will see you again tomorrow. You have been watching Managing Day to Day. Sorry, I'm kind of tongue tied. That three day weekend got, almost got me, didn't it? You've been watching Managing Day to Day with me, Christina Laster, National Parents Union. Again, I hope you're all well. I hope that you're thriving. Goodbye, America's beautiful children. We love you, and we will see you to get again <laughs> tomorrow. Same place. Same time with Managing Day to Day. And don't forget to tune in to other shows that we also have throughout the day on the National Parents Union Facebook page. You can find those shows and those wonderful guests with all the lovely information that they have to share, relevant information. And also make sure that you read the Family Bill of Rights, which you can look up on the National Parents Union uh, website. Um, and tell us what you think. We'd like to hear from you. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.